Hello, Katerina. Make anyone cry today? Sadly, no. But it's only 4.30. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 savage moments in teen movies. I haven't looked at that in forever. Here, check it out, Katie. It's our burn book. For this list, we'll be looking at characters' sassiest, harshest, and most cutting lines and actions in films geared towards adolescents. Some plot points will be discussed, so a mild spoiler alert is in effect. Which of these burns had you reaching for a cold compress? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. A Blistering Speech 17 Again High school can be rough, especially if you have to deal with an arrogant kid who constantly picks on others. But when Mike O'Donnell, an adult man, gets a chance to be 17 again, he doesn't waste it. What are you gonna do? What am I gonna do? Stan, who's about as big a monster as they come, has been targeting his son Alex. And Mike doesn't hold back standing up to him, completely eviscerating the jerk in the cafeteria for everyone to see. It'd be way too easy to say Stan prays in the week simply because he's a dick. No, no, no. Stan here is much more complex than that. It's not a quick burn either. His perfect three-part speech digs into the psychology behind why Stan would behave so horribly. Like a caveman, Stan's brain is underdeveloped. <laughs> Therefore, Stan is unable to use self-control. And so he acts out aggressively. From his mental capacity to his physical endowments, there is no part of Stan that Mike doesn't scorch. Those smooth basketball moves throughout just add to the humiliation, and we are here for it. Don't hurt yourself, big boy. Number 9. Olive's Abominable Comeback Easy A Academic discussions don't always get heated, but when they do and things get personal, it's best to watch your back. When Olive pretends to have lost her V-card, the story spreads around school, prompting judgment from people like Nina. Perhaps you should embroider a red A on your wardrobe, you abominable tramp. The class discussion of the Scarlet Letter unfortunately opened the door for Nina to make her disapproval crystal clear. Of course, our protagonist isn't one to take that lying down, and she claps back with a response for the ages. Perhaps you should get a wardrobe, you abominable <gasps> Talk about putting someone in their place. As fans of the movie know, Olive ends up actually taking Nina's advice later on and completely owning it, which makes this moment even better. Ooh, burn. <laughs> Number 8. Cat Takes a Stand 10 Things I Hate About You. Cat Stratford isn't one to conform, which is a huge part of why we love her so much. And she gives us quite a few burns to revel in throughout 10 Things I Hate About You. Her planetary banter with her sister Bianca, for example, showcases her quick wit. Where did you come from, planet loser? As opposed to planet, look at me, look at me. But seeing her expose the problematic attitudes that perpetuate patriarchal systems takes the cake. When she points out the fact that famed American novelist Ernest Hemingway was far from romantic, her arrogant classmate Joey tries to come for her personality. He was an abusive alcoholic misogynist who squandered half his life hanging around Picasso trying to nail his leftovers. As opposed to a bitter self-righteous hag who has no friends? He's super proud of his cheap insult too, but he shouldn't be. Her cutting comeback knocks him down several pegs, making him look like the fool he is. I guess in this society, being male and an asshole makes you worthy of our time. <laughs> Needless to say, we're Team Cat. Number 7. Exposing Paolo, the Lizzie McGuire movie. The only thing worse than a fraud is a fraud who tries to embarrass his talented counterpart. Paolo is just a liar. This has all been some crazy scheme to set you up and embarrass you on stage so it looks like Isabella can't sing. Paolo can't sing to save his life. Isabella, on the other hand, has a wonderful voice. Upset that she wants to go solo, he cooks up a scheme to make it seem like she's a fake by manipulating her doppelganger, Lizzie McGuire. Thankfully, the truth comes out just in time, as Isabella and Gordo collaborate to show everyone exactly what Paolo sounds like live. I would never want to It's astoundingly ruthless, but he deserves it. She then steps onto the stage, viciously delivering four loaded words in front of the packed audience. This is what dreams are made 
You could say that this is the merciless moment dreams are made of. Number 6. Good riddance. Bring it on. It's safe to say that there are a lot of bad movie boyfriends out there. Torrance's beau Aaron in Bring It On is undoubtedly among the worst offenders. He doesn't believe that she can be a stellar cheer captain, and he lets her know it. You're a great cheerleader, Tor, and you're cute as hell. It's just that maybe... <sighs> Maybe you're just not Captain Material. Not only is his little talk patronizing, but it's also cruel. So the moment when she finally kicks him to the curb later on is everything. Is this a bad time? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm super busy. I'm working on this project. Yeah, you sound super busy. I guess that's it. You were too busy to believe in me. We would have settled for a plain old, we're done. But Torrance goes the extra mile and infuses the breakup with attitude and flair. She takes Aaron's own words, modifies them for the occasion, and masterfully uses them against him. You're a great cheerleader, Aaron. It's just that maybe you're not exactly boyfriend material. Bye bye Her wave goodbye is just the cherry on top of the fierce cake. Number 5. No inner beauty. She's the man. You know how they say it's what's on the inside that counts? You're hot, Monique, smoking hot! Come here! <laughs> but there are plenty of hot girls out there! Come back here and talk to me And right the now. truth is, you have absolutely nothing yes. else to offer! Viola, a teen girl pretending to be her brother Sebastian, teaches his snooty girlfriend Monique that lesson when she publicly dumps her. She chooses the most blunt method possible while trying to keep her true identity secret. Sebastian, keep away from me! I beg your pardon. You can play the scene a hundred times over, and it never gets any less hilarious or brutal. Viola's delivery, comedic timing, and facial expression combine to create something devastating that has us all in stitches. Sure, she could have picked a nicer way to end things, but this no-holds-barred approach is way more entertaining and honest. And when my eyes are closed, I see you for what you truly are, which is ugly! Plus, we all have a new, infinitely more fun way to pronounce the word ugly now. Number 4. A busy higher power. A walk to remember. If you ask any A Walk to Remember fan to describe main character Jamie Sullivan, they'll likely use words like gracious, reserved, loving, and intelligent. They'll also tell you how important her faith is to her, especially as she deals with her terminal illness. You know what I figured out today? What? Maybe God has a bigger plan for me than I had for myself. What they might forget to mention, though, is that she can also deliver a cutthroat comeback. When a rude peer simultaneously comes for her belief in God and her wardrobe, she wastes absolutely no time putting him in his place. If there is a higher power, then why is it he can't get you in your sweater? <laughs> He's too busy looking for your brain. Oh, dee! <laughs> her retort isn't loud or flashy in any way, but boy does it do the job. The most painful burns often come from the most unexpected people, and this is one example we're eternally grateful for. Exactly. Exactly. It's like you're reading my mind. Great. Um, maybe you could read mine. Number 3. Locker Room Confrontation – A Cinderella Story We all know the story of Cinderella. In this modern retelling, protagonist Sam puts up with a lot of mean-spirited comments and behaviors. Her stepsisters are awful, but stepmom Fiona takes the cake. There's something I've always wanted to tell you, and I think you're ready to hear it. You're not very pretty, and you're not very bright. By the end, though, our heroine stands up for herself. I quit. I quit this job. I quit your family. And I'm moving out. That involves confronting Austin Ames, her initially anonymous romantic interest, who messed up once he found out who she was. Okay, I know that you think that I'm just some... Coward. Phony. Okay, just listen. No, you listen. You turned out to be exactly who I thought you were. I never pretended to be somebody else. It's been me all along. And it was me who was hurt in front of everybody. 
From the moment you see Sam march into the boys' locker room, you know things are about to get heated. She refuses to let Austin interrupt, fearlessly owning her worth and exposing his vulnerabilities. She ends her award-worthy monologue with a scathing comparison that always makes our jaws drop to the floor. I know that guy that sent those emails is somewhere down inside of you, but I can't wait for him. Because waiting for you is like waiting for rain in this drought. Useless and disappointing. You go, girl. Number two, all of Damien's quips, Mean Girls. When Katie starts attending North Shore High School, two students take her under their wing. One of them, Janice, has her fair share of sassy moments. Nice wig, Janice. What's it made of? Your mom's chest hair. But it's the other, Damien, who exemplifies what being a savage is all about. And we mean that in the best way. He gives us one biting and quotable remark after another, and each one is utterly diabolical. Hey, get out of here! Oh my god, Danny DeVito, I love your work! From his ingenious exchange in the girls' bathroom, to his unforgettable candy cane delivery, Damien absolutely owns whenever he's on screen. We'd also be remiss not to mention the way he harshly calls out that poor, sad girl at the assembly he isn't technically supposed to be attending. She doesn't even go here! That's an icon if we've ever seen one. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Annette's Revenge, Cruel Intentions. Watching Catherine get what she deserves is insanely rewarding. Fashion Police, The Breakfast Club. John Bender clearly isn't afraid of authority figures. Any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Reacting to a new reflection, Freaky Friday. Saying this about your mom's face while she's standing next to you is next level. Look at me! I know, we seem to be inside. I'm old! I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm like the Crypt Keeper! Okay, that's enough. A loaded hand gesture, Camp Rock. This burn is silent but deadly. Okay, what is that? She said, whatever, major loser. Unfiltered honesty, 13 going on 30. Leave it to Jenna to tell it like it is. <laughs> you know what? You are rude and mean and sloppy and frizzy. I don't like you at all. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Ty Gets Harsh – Clueless A lot of savage comments in teen movies are well-deserved or tinged with humor, but this one is downright cold. When Cher expresses her belief that Ty and Josh might not be a romantic match, her friend doesn't take it well at all. But I'm not good enough for Josh or something. I, I just don't think you mesh well together. She could engage in a productive conversation or walk away to avoid making things more awkward, but no. Instead, Ty crosses a major line, uttering a ferocious phrase and metaphorically hitting Cher exactly where it hurts. I was like, why am I even listening to you to begin with? You're a virgin who can't drive. Her unsympathetic expression only makes the dig feel more heartless and leaves us speechless every time. The pain on Cher's face is visible, and her response says it all. Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. Right. Look, I'm really sorry. Let's just talk when we've mellowed, all right? We're not exaggerating when we say you could cut the tension here with a knife. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.